How do the sea otter, um, the current sea otter population standings compare to their previous standings before they were hunted to near extinction? Okay, so that's a very interesting question because we don't really know exactly how many sea otters existed before they were hunted, but the guess uh, that we throw out there is about 150,000 to 200,000 sea otters and um, before the fur trade and now today, first of all, right after the fur trade ended in um, the late um, 1800s and for sure when it ended in 1910 with the International Fur Seal Treaty, um, sea otters were afforded protection there from hunting. At that time there were less than a thousand sea otters, so they went from 150,000, somewhere around 150,000 to 200,000 to less than a thousand throughout the whole Pacific Range in um, 10 or 11 isolated groups that had 10 to 100 individuals per population. We don't know exactly because there weren't people there really documenting very well. But today, we estimate um, there's about between 90,000 sea otters and 110,000 sea otters. So there's about um, 70 to 80 percent of the sea otters today that used to occur before the fur trade. But again, it's hard to tell because we don't know exactly how many sea otters there were. Yeah. What percent of that population lives in Washington? Well, there's 1,100 sea otters that live in Washington. So uh, let's see, 1,000 out of 100,000, that would be now you're going to test my math. <laughs> that would be 1%. <laughs> yeah, so um, we have about a, a thousand sea otters here in Washington, and we don't know exactly how many there were before the fur trade or how many can be um, supported by Washington State coastline. But before the fur trade, we think that the sea otters that lived in Washington were the same population or intermixing with populations that lived in Vancouver Island and intermixing with populations that lived in Oregon and Northern California and Central California. So essentially it was a continuous population throughout the whole west coast of the United States, Canada, and Alaska. Okay, so you said um, there were sea otters living in Oregon. I read that currently there are no or sea otters found in Oregon. Do you think it's possible that we could bring sea otters back to there or? Well, um, the reason why we have sea otters in Washington is because they were moved from Alaska, specifically um, Amchika Island, to Washington in the late 1960s, early 1970s, because the last native Washington sea otter was shot in Willapa Bay in 1910. And so from 1910 to 1970, there were no sea otters in Washington. So for 60 years, we had no sea otters. We hunted them to extinction. Well, at that same time that those otters were moved from Amchika Island to Washington, there were about um, 70 that were moved and maybe 10 survived to um, create the population that we have today. More than double that were moved off the Oregon coast. So about I think it was 130 to 140 sea otters were moved from Alaska to Oregon and there are still no sea otters that are surviving there today. And we're not sure exactly what happened. Um, we're not sure if a bunch of them died because of the stress of the, uh, we, we know a number of them died because of the stress of the transport. Um, but there's a thought that many of them just swam north, didn't for some reason didn't want to be in Oregon or were trying to get back to Alaska. And we actually think that some of that those otters that were transplanted off of Oregon actually now are, their um, babies are living off the Washington coast. So we think that, um, not all the animals died off of Oregon, but they actually moved and mixed with that group that was translocated to Washington Coast. Where, um, there are a couple otters in Oregon, oh, okay. but um, there's just one or two, and we don't cons we don't really call otters living in an area unless it's a female group or raft, which is a group of sea otters is called a raft. Yeah, a female group with pups living in an area for say. Sea otters in California have suddenly been dying from an unknown cause. What do you think has been causing this sudden decline in otter populations? California sea otter is doing so great. Um, over uh, the sea, California sea otters, have the, they go up and then they have a dip and then they go up a little bit and then they have a dip and I think they're kind of leveling off. They've always grown slower than the otter populations in Alaska and off of Washington and off of uh, Vancouver Island. And, um, there's a lot of people working on it. There's a lot of very smart people that are trying to figure out what's going on. Um, and I worked on a project with um, 
20 different people trying to figure out, you know, is it diet, is it disease, is it because there's so many people down there in California, mm -hmm. um, pollutants, pathogens from dogs and cats and other things, uh, is it genetic diversity because of that um, fur trade and they lost so many numbers, they went from 100,000 down to less than 1,000, they lost 99% of their numbers. Um, they did lose genetic diversity. We actually did work on that. They lost half of their genetic diversity because of the fur trade. And that's what's needed to respond to new diseases and uh, differences of prey, climate change, all that kind of stuff. So the answer is nobody knows. We don't think it's one thing that is happening in California. It's multiple things. So they're, they are living in an area that's most densely populated by people. So there's more pollution from just people living along the water than in anywhere else than in Washington or Vancouver Island or Alaska. Um, there's massive agriculture just inland of Monterey, for example, which is Salinas Valley, and all the chemicals, the pesticides and the fertilizers come down the Salinas River and go right into Monterey Bay, which is where the sea otters are. So they have to deal with pollutants, chemicals, they have to deal with uh, uh, diseases that come from dogs and cats and possums and other things, um, and they have found a dye for many of those diseases. Um, one of the biggest things in California is they've been there since the fur trade, so they're called a remnant population, um, and they think that now they're, they're food limited. So they like to eat the same things people do, so crabs, clams, um, urchins, abalone, and um, they have to eat a lot because they don't have a blubber layer, so they eat 25% of their body weight every day just to stay warm because they're mm -hmm. relying on just this really high metabolism um, to stay warm as well as this extremely thick mm -hmm. fur, which is why they were out so much for the fur trade. So mm. right now the biggest theory is that the sea otters in California aren't growing as quickly as possible because they just don't have um, enough food to support a growing population. But then also there's a lot of diseases that they're dealing with. Um, they have low genetic diversity, um, they're dealing with all this pollution. Um, so they have a lot of different things going on, but the, the prevailing theory right now is really food limitation. Um, so they need to move into an area that hasn't had sea otters there for a while and doesn't have a lot of fishing by humans or a lot mm -hmm. of uh, competition. And maybe the sea otters in California, you know, but right now there's about 2,500, I think, or 2,800. Maybe that's as many as Central California can support. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so but you... we don't really know. Yeah. Actually, in California, is a lot of times when those those otters are washed ashore, they're very skinny, and they have diseases. So they die from being very thin and diseases. Well, which came first? Did, were they thin and they because they didn't have enough to eat, and then because of that they were susceptible to diseases because they just got so weak, mm -hmm. or did they have the diseases first and then they were so weak so they couldn't f find enough food because yeah. they have. So we don't know which comes first. The, the the thinness or the disease. So a um, bunch of veterinarians and pathologists are trying to work this out and um, some of the smartest people I know are starting to point towards they think it's more the food. Although sea yeah. otters have, like I said, low genetic diversity, they also have low diversity in the areas of the gene that code for um, responding to diseases or immune response. So I think, personally, since I work on genetics and other things like that, I think that it's a combination of low genetic diversity, exposure exposure to diseases, like I said, the, the um, cat uh, parasites in the cat feces, and then food limitation. So it's this combination of things. So you said that one of the possible causes was diseases, and you also said that some sea otters like travel up and down the coast. If it is a disease, do you think that if a sea otter with the disease came up to Washington, do you think it could spread to other wa to other sea otters? Well, the diseases that the California sea otters are dying from are not really diseases that they can give to other otters so much. It's more a disease that they get from the environment. So, um, some one of the ones is uh, Toxoplasma plasma gondii, which is uh, a cat um, parasite that comes from um, cat feces, but also possum feces. And what happens is, is the the cat the eggs in the cat and possum feces gets washed into um, the near shore area where the otters eat, but then it ha it has to be concentrated to all those um, 
uh, parasite uh, eggs in like a clam in a filter feeder and then the otter eats that clam and so the, the clam is the intermediate host and then the otter is the final host. So in other words an otter which has toxoplasmic gondi which eventually gets established in its brain and it causes the death of the otter. Mm -hmm. um, can't give it to another otter. Oh okay. So um, it would have to then it would have to be in an area where the, these feces are washed out into the near shore and then concentrated in a clam and then eaten. I'm trying to think of their, if there's um, contagious diseases that the sea otters have down there. I know some of the otters have been found to have um, canine distemper, um, which is a communicable disease, disease, but we're not sure if that kills them. But there has been canine distemper um, found in some of the Washington sea otters too, which just shows that there's enough dogs you know, going along our coast yeah. spreading that. Um, some of the seals off of our coast have that as well. Um, so I'm not, it, I, I guess I'm thinking it's more environmental um, effects of diseases rather than the otters giving the disease to themselves. Yeah. But I'm not, a, I'm not a pathologist and I'm not a veterinarian, so that's just my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> if this project would actually be brought into action, what kind of companies or institutes do you think would be interested in helping with funding? What would be the benefit of tripling that number? Well, the classic um, story of the sea otter is that it's a, a, a keystone species or an apex predator. And so apex predators and keystone species are one that sit at the top of the food chain and really structure what's everything below them. Because, especially mm. sea otters, because they eat so much just to stay alive. Yeah. 5% of their body weight. And they like to eat um, things that like to eat kelp. Specifically, they love to eat sea urchins, which yeah. love to eat kelp. They like to eat abalone, which like to eat kelp. They eat what we call macro or big invertebrates, like sea urchins, kelp, clams, like that. When sea otters move into an area, they wipe out those kelp eaters first. And what happens when a sea otters move into an area where they haven't been before, um, what typically happens is that area will be what's called an urchin barren underneath the water, so it'll be a desert. Mm of just urchins covering the bottom of the ocean floor. And they have pictures of this that's very well documented because sea otters were so rare until like the mid of the last century. Yeah. So they have all these areas that are just covered with urchins and nothing else. Sea otters move in and within like a year or two there aren't so many urchins, aren't so many urchin eating things and the kelp starts to grow. And with this kelp you get a more diverse environment and all of a sudden you have more um, salmon, more baby rockfish, a lot more different fish species, which a lot of people like because the fishermen are like, well, I didn't really want to eat urchins all the time anyways. I yes. want rockfish, I want salmon, I want smelt, I want all these different fish species. So with sea otters in an environment, you get a more complex nearshore eco ocean ecosystem and you'll get more fish species. You'll have less of the big invertebrates. You'll still have them. Like where sea otters live, mm. you can still find abalone, you can still find urchins, you can still find clams, but they're just not all out in the open everywhere. They're kind of yeah. tucked in crevices and things like that. So I would think that maybe um, some of the fishing communities would want, would pay to have sea otters yeah. um, come back because with the sea otters you have areas that are very important for larval fishes like rockfish and like salmon and things like that. So I think our fishing industry, which is pretty huge in Washington State, especially salmon um, enhancement efforts, um, gosh, we've listed on the Endangered Species Act salmon. Um, you could probably get money from the federal government to recover a lot of those near shore areas. Yeah. And so say all we need is salmon coming in, or is, is otters coming in, and then we'll have all this um, area for larval fish. Another th uh, company, that would be really interested in uh, having sea otters in an area and large kelp forests would be, I would say, gas companies, the petroleum companies. And the reason why is I think in the near future we're, they're going to have to start paying for the carbon that they produce. So when gas yeah. companies will have to buy carbon credits because with their product they're releasing carbon into the environment, which is bad for climate change. And they have to buy carbon credits. In other words, when the, you burn so much fossil fuel, you have to plant so many trees, right? Yeah. Well, kelp is really good at absorbing carbon out of the environment. So with sea otters, you have more kelp and you have more ability to basically scrub carbon out of the atmosphere. So those yeah. oil companies or petroleum companies 
might want to enhance sea otters off the Washington coast because then they could buy the carbon credits from all of the kelp.